Hello everyone, you welcome to this edition of the 6 p.m. Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital. Duala in our top stories, the press statement of Professor Maurice Kamto of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, CRM, political party in which he said Cameroonians have given him a mandate as far as the presidential election is concerned, a mandate that he will protect and fight for right up to victory uh, provokes angry reactions within inner circles of the government of the Republic of Cameroon and the ruling Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, CPDM political party, government spokesperson and minister of communication, Issa Chiruma Bakari and the secretary general of the central committee of the CPDM political party, Jean Quitty, condemned the outing of Professor Maurice Kamto as illegal and anti-productive and even going to generate violence in the country and Transparency International says it did not send an observer mission to Cameroon as far as the presidential election is concerned and the question now is who sent those observers who spoke in the name of Transparency International shortly after the voting ended the question remains without answers those were top stories Government officials and big wigs of the ruling Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, CPDM political party, including Minister of Communication and Government spokesperson Issa Chiruma Bakari and the Secretary General of the CPDM have come out to condemn with strong terms the press statement of Professor Maurice Kamto, candidate of the CRM political party, national president of that party, a statement in which he said Cameroonians have given him a mandate as far as the presidential election of Sunday is concerned, a mandate that he will protect and fight for right up to victory. Ino Senazi has more. Tension looms around Cameroon after Cameroonians went to the poll to elect a new president that will rule for the next seven years. Few hours after voting, Professor Maurice Camto, presidential candidate of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement Party, declared himself victor from unofficial results. I embarked on a historic penalty shootout mission and I have kicked it. The goal has been scored. Je l'ai tiré. Le but a été marqué. In furious response, the ruling CPDM party criticized the act by Maurice Camto, announcing victory before the Constitutional Council. In a press conference organized by Jean Quete, CPDM Central Committee Secretary General, and attended by allied parties, Camto was highly criticized. Que le peuple camerounais attend sereinement. While Cameroonians peacefully await the official proclamation of results, certain candidates organize meetings to inflame and announce victory and call on the population to defend their presumed win, thereby creating tension, insecurity, violence in the nation. Defendre la prétendue victoire en créant un climat de tension, d'insécurité et de violence dans le pays. The CPDM party holds that the action of Professor Maurice Camto is a threat to social peace in Cameroon. De tel comportement relève de l'immaturité et de la fébrilité politique. Such behavior portrays an act of immaturity and political weakness et des institutions que leurs auteurs ambitionnés de défendre en se portant candidat à l'élection présidentielle. After the CPDM Central Committee Secretary General spoke, Issa Chiruma Bakari took the floor and expressed himself. Par cette déclaration, nous avons conclu une chose. He concludes, such an act by Kamto could either be witchcraft or incantation where some compatriots with that which has not been written anywhere. Des extraterrestres qui ont la possibilité de lire ce qui n'est pas écrit. Concerning results of the presidential election of October 7, the CPDM Big Weeks declared that no candidate has the prerogative to announce victory in Cameroon when he did not win in Grand North, that is, 
the whole of northern Cameroon that usually rallies behind Paul Bia. According to Isa Chiruma Bakari, there is need to block any move by whosoever wants to destabilize the country. It is not only the police that will prevent such an individual, but the entire nation, because we are threatened. These are people who want to set our nation on fire. The CPDM and government have maintained that only the Constitutional Council has the right to announce results within 15 days, but the precise date has not been made public. For greater details on this issue that has kept tongues waxing in Cameroon, here is an extract of the CPDM Secretary General Jean Quete. Take a listen. The presidential election of the 7th October 2018 took place all over the national territory in an atmosphere of calm and transparency in the presence of the several national and international observers. <clears throat> the CPDM and all its political allies greet all the electors who massively came out to freely accomplish their civic duty. We wish to particularly thank the militants of the CPDM, those of other political parties, as well as members of civil society organizations, who gave the support to President Paul Bia, candidate of CPDM. All through the electoral campaigns, and on elections day, our compatriots distinguish themselves by their patriotism and good manners, which is proof of their political maturity and the deep entrenchment of democracy in our society. We ask all our compatriots to remain peaceful and where, as we await the results of the election, to calmly go about the, the occupations and to not cede to any form of provocation. Transparency International says it did not send observers to monitor Sunday's presidential election in the Republic of Cameroon. Yesterday, some individuals uh, spoke to the President of the Nation's political captain, Yaoundé, under the cover of the International Non-Governmental Organization, and they declared to be observers from Transparency International. But according to Patricia Morira, Managing Director of Transparency International, they had not dispatched, or the organ did not dispatch, any team of observers to observe the 2018 presidential election in Cameroon and the body says at this uh, critical time for democracy in Cameroon, they urge all parties in the, uh, politics and media to act responsibly and with integrity in their communication around the elections and its result. And the Dynamic Citoyen Civil Society Organization has equally criticized the outing of uh, some individuals in the nation's political capital who said they were speaking in the name of Transparency International and simply said that the election in the Republic of Cameroon unfolded history despite some few irregularities and noted in some polling stations across the country. Dynamic Citoyen Non-Governmental Organization says Transparency International has not uh, got any authority to observe elections in the Republic of Cameroon. Details in this report. 
Dynamic Citoyen is one of the civil society actors who holds that Professor Maurice Kamto was not wrong to claim victory in the October 7th presidential election in Cameroon. In a press conference Tuesday, Jean-Marc Bikoko said that he was rather surprised at the series of condemnations, adding that Section 113 of the Electoral Court states that the results have to be proclaimed immediately after the vote count. Dynamic Citoyen is surprised that Tolle could provoke this result qui, dans le contexte des libertés d'expression, est tout à fait normal. C'est d'autant plus que l'article 113 du Code électoral en vigueur stipule que, immédiatement après le déploiement des votes, le résultat acquis est rendu public. Jean-Marc Bikoko accused the Minister of Territorial Administration of meddling in the electoral process in Cameroon, urged Elections Cameroon to do his job, and called on the government of the country to remind Minister Paul Atanganji of his duties. Soit c'est Elie Kamté au gardien d'élection, soit c'est le Minat. The civil society organization questioned the credibility of observers from Transparency International and said that they have no experience to monitor election in Cameroon. On les a jamais vus dans les élections dans aucun pays. On les a vus pour la première fois ici. On est surpris. According to Dynamic Citoyen, the general conduct of the 2018 presidential election was satisfactory, but for the tense atmosphere reported in the conflict hit northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. However, reports have indicated that the observers sent to Cameroon by Transparency International were not members of the international organization. Mimi Mefo reporting there and the Social Democratic Front SDF political party of Ni John Frudi has admitted that the current unstable socio-political situation in the northwest and southwest regions of the country has adversely affected its performance in the Sunday 2018 presidential election in the Republic of Cameroon. Speaking to Equinox Television today, the STF campaign manager Henry Fossi Nanda said the chaotic atmosphere made it difficult for the voters to go to the polling centers to take part in the voting process. Let's now hear uh, Henry Fossi Nanda. There was no covert and reliable election in the northwest and the southwest. Northwest and the southwest. No, I'm saying the result, the election were were questionable. Okay, Every, people were not free to go out of out of their home and that's vote. The okay, so that's clear. Second reason: the future of a political party is a question of ideas and a question of. Uh, and uh, this is of integration with the environment. Concerning the ideas, I, I think that as, as I, de I developed, many ideas that were put in this campaign by the SDF candidate. So I think that concerning ideas, we have renewed the stock of IDF ideas. We have adapted the motto of the SDF on in this campaign. And people have understood it very well. And people do not understand only at the first sight but they have to go and think about it. I think the people have understood that we are progressing in the ideas and that we are going in a good direction. And the third one, and is very important, is organizational organizational force. I, I told you that the SDF was, is the only party, all the opposing party, even 300 party, that is today able to be represented in the whole national territory. One of the injured victims of the deadly fire incident that occurred at Nouverut Besenge Thursday night breaking Friday, Nouverut Besenge is here in the economic capital. Dwala, one of the victims, has died, and a young girl of about 12 years old who uh, had been receiving treatment at the Dwala General Hospital died yesterday, raising the death toll to three. President Paul Beer has disbursed a 13 million francs CV assistance to the victims of the incident, which ravaged 19 houses and rendered over 100 persons homeless after visiting the injured victims at the Dollar General Hospital and the Lacantini Hospital. Little Governor Samuel de Donay Vaha Dibois proceeded to the incident site before handing over the presidential aid to the victims. Each of the landlords whose houses were consumed by flames and the 
year tenants received 144,000 francs CFA, while burnt and dead victims and all their families received 500,000 francs CFA. Each one of the injured victims is out of hospital. Government is taking care of the treatment fees of the victims affected by the fire incident at Nouvelle Route Besenge here in the economic capital Douala. Here's now some extract of the governor. I have been sent by the head of state, His Excellency President Paul Bia, who is aware of what happened here the night of the 4th October to the 5th. And uh, he is uh, shocked by what happened, and I've seen that uh, there is a lady who is dead, and the other people that are injured are in the hospital. So the head of state sent me to tell to those people that uh, he is, uh, uh, he is uh, just uh, uh, um, paying uh, attention to what happens and is also uh, sending something to help those people that have uh, uh, lost the, the, the houses and uh, some that are in, uh, in the hospital today. So it, it's just to say uh, this situation, uh, the uh, investigations are still going on and uh, we want everybody to be calm and to see that uh, the head of state is also following any matter in this uh, town of Douala. On the sidelines of the World Post Day being observed today, we take a look at the impact of information and communication technology on postal services in Cameroon. Sending and receiving messages, parcels and money have become an issue of seconds and minutes. Information and communication technologies have greatly eased such transactions to the detriment of the traditional letter sending methods of institutions like the Cameroon Postal Services. The absence of a functioning regulatory organ has also favored the uncontrolled entrance into this domain of activity of other actors like travel agencies. Campos, which had a monopoly over these activities some years down memory lane, has lost some of its clients over the years. However, the institution is still functioning, though below capacity compared to the years when it was the only enterprise specialized in mail and parcel transactions and to a lesser extent some financial transactions, notwithstanding to many, can post is still the most reliable. We are here to send a letter to our families and we are using the campus pass. We prefer to send through the post office because there's more assurance that the letter will reach. Le colis que j'envoie en Allemagne en deux semaines, il est moins cher et il arrive à temps. At the littoral regional delegation of Campost and the Bonanjo branch of the company, we are told that to counter the adverse impact of competition and technology on its income and existence, Campost is developing and implementing innovative services such as City Post, Melo, Campost Money, and others in a bid to meet the exigencies. Of this technology era. Je ne sais pas si Campos fait de transfer dans ce genre. But many are not aware of the existence of these services. Je ne suis pas au courant qu'il y a des services transaction dans la Campos. Thus, the need to enhance communication and marketing strategies. Je crois qu'il y a un problème de communication qu'il faudrait voir. In what looks like a driving force on this signboard, we are told that nothing can replace a letter because spoken words fly away but written words are long lasting finance ministers presidents of some financial institutions and governors of central banks of the frank zone have resolved to develop the frank zone by uh, strengthening domestic resource mobilization the experts took this uh, commitment during a meeting in france details in this report by for me and Meeting under the patronage of Bruno Le Maire, French Minister of Economy and Finance, the finance ministers, presidents of regional institutions and governors of the central banks of the Franc Zone, reiterated their desire to develop the Franc Zone. 
In an economic context marked by resumption of growth across the African continent, the experts pledge to implement sustainable economic policies focus on strengthening domestic resource mobilization and diversification in order to limit the risks of external and economic financial dependence. They reiterated their willingness to continue to make the Frank Zone an area of active coordination of public policies in conjugation with main donors and institutions. The expert noted the risks arising from the rapid re-indebtedness and physical deficit which could undermine the external and internal balances of states' consent. The ministers recall the importance of rapid and strong improvements in the mobilization of domestic resources. They also agreed on the need for coordinated approach to ensure the proper functioning of currency union like the franc CFA and to preserve the sustainability of development trajectories. The ministers, presidents of financial institutions and the governors of the franc zone also noted that a large majority of countries in the region continue to implement a program with the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and receive financial support from the World Bank, the African Development Bank, the European Union, and other institutions. However, they stress on the need to implement structural reforms, plans agreed on such programs in order to improve the microeconomic situations and recover the path of inclusive and sustainable growth necessary for most of the African economies. In the United States of America, U.S. President Donald Trump has accepted the resignation of the U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley. He told reporters in the Oval Office that he, uh, she will be leaving the post at the end of the year after doing an incredible job. Joined by the former South Carolina governor in the Oval Office, he invited her to come back in a different role. Nikki Haley was confirmed as as U.S. envoy to the United States in January 2019, she gave no reasons for her resignation after two years. 46-year-old Nikki Haley told reporters that despite speculations, she was not planning to run for president in 2020. She said that she will be campaigning for President Donald Trump. That's it for this edition of the, the first part of this edition of the news. Coming up next, Talking Point. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in Talking Points. We are receiving a legal mind, Barrister Kamwa Limen Frobe. He is a member of the Cameroon Bar Association. You're welcome, Barrister. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. Now, when we listen to what is happening in Cameroon today, we can quickly perceive a tension around the presidential election, notably after the uh, press statement of Professor Maurice Kanto, who said Cameroonians have given him a mandate that he will defend and fight for right up to victory. Well, I would say it's, uh, it's not strange that after elections in Cameroon, we have uh, this uh, kind of uh, attitude and, and situation. And I think it's all because we are not honest. We are not honest with what we do before and after elections. I think it's been normal that in a society where people are dishonest, where people are not, institutions are not very credible, it can always lead to such a situation. So I'm not very surprised. It has always been like this. Like the Minister of Territorial Administration at Tanganji Paul indicated in the press outing, as well as the Minister of Communication, as well as the Secretary General of the CPDM, it is illegal to do what Maurice Kamto did. Well, yesterday I was in this. Uh, as a legal mind. Yesterday I was uh, here in your TV station uh, in a program, and I made it very clear that whatever comes out from Maurice Kamto should be taken with a lot of care because he's an excellent, he's a, he's a very smart lawyer. And he will not fall into small, cheap, cheap, uh, uh, how do I put it, traps, you understand? And what he did, was it proclamation of results or was it a public uh, pub a publication of his results? Absolutely. It's from there, we start from there. What he did was not proclamation of results. I was going, to, public. I was going to ask you that question because yes. it is said that he is 
uh, revendicating victory. He is saying that he has won the election, but did he actually say so? Well, I'll look, I didn't get word for word what he said, right? But the part that interests me is what I got when he said that the people have given him the mandate. Maybe there's another part of the story that I didn't hear properly. But as far as that is concerned, I don't think legally he has committed, he has committed an offense. Because if we go by the provisions of Section 113 of the, of the Electoral Code, it makes it very clear that after elections, count will be done, and immediately thereafter, each polling station will declare, will make public the results of, of candidates. So it goes without saying that if you do an arithmetic calculation of all the polling stations, one can have a pro, one can rightly say what, what the trend is. Though we were told, we were told but, in this country. The, the, the law says that only the Constitutional Council has the legal authority to proclaim results. Yes, what I'm saying is that what he did was not proclamation of results, to the best of my understanding. He made public. He made public what he has calculated as per his results. He didn't give figures or percentage and to say that this party had this percentage, this percentage, this party had this percentage. No, he didn't do that. But what Cameronia should be asking is why should he do that? That is what is, it is important. Considering that he is a legal man, yes, why, he why is a did lawyer he do that? and he knows these things. Yes, why, 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 why did he do that? He's not, he's not, he's not, he's not an imbecile, he's not a fool. There is a reason why he did it. And in all honesty, I think that he feels that the arena is not the best. The field is not so, the, the field is, is rough. And that precaution, he should take precautions to, to safeguard what he believes is when, his. When you say the field is rough, what exactly are you referring to? Well, you just read from your news that Transparency International uh, disclaimed that he did not send representatives to Cameroon. Is that not indicative of the fact that therefore that something was wrong? If Transparency International is saying that, who gave those people authorization to come to Cameroon and on whose behalf were they talking? You understand? And then we'll get into something more serious. Before elections, what Cameroonians should know is that laws are classified. There's hierarchical classification of laws. We have the constitution, which is a grown norm. We have uh, the laws from, from the parliament, followed by ordinances and decrees from the president and ministerial orders. Now, when you look at the electoral code, it is a law. When you look at the decision that comes from a minister, it is, it is the, the electoral law is superior to that law. Am I making sense? And the minister before elections came out and said that he did not want people to, to you know, gathering during the election and then uh, that uh, people should not give any trends. trends. But that article states, article 113 states, in the earlier that people, uh, just, there will be calculation, the population will gather to calculate, to, to, to pronounce, to count, and, 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 and make public, and make public the, the, the results. So in all honesty, except, except there is something else, I don't see what, what is his statement to create this kind of panic that I see around. But when you look at the atmosphere in Cameroon today, uh, especially with the crisis, the security crisis affecting the country, uh, was it um, a wise uh, move by Professor Maurice Camto? We begin first of all by even asking a question that, with the given the prevailing situations in Northwest and Southwest and the North, was it a wise decision to have election this year? It was. It was so. From there, don't you, you people always try no, to look the, the, at things. The media, you, you forget to know that there are other things that we should consider. So, it, if I am it, saying, I am saying that Maurice Camto has been with the government. He knows the government better than us. He is a sound. He is a sound lawyer. He knows on what he's stepping in, and so I'm not defending him. But I think that he's somebody. I have a lot of trust and respect for him to think that. He will go, he will, he, will, he will get into an easy trap. And some have interpreted that press statement of Professor Maurice Camto as calling the people down to the streets. No, no, Has no, no. Has anything to do with No, that? no, no. I think in his mind, I think in his mind, he just feels that something fishy might happen. So he's calling, he's calling on people to, to, to be aware, to, 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 to be more vigilant. I don't think he has called anybody to, to the street. On the contrary, before I came here, I saw an, uh, uh, an observatory group that I don't want to do cheap publicity for them. It's like they have taken, they, 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 they dropped a complaint against uh, Maurice Counter, the military tribunal in, in, in Yaoundé. It's all uh, it's, uh, on social media, and uh, that he was inciting the population to. But the question is, why would that complaint even be received? The harm was done against who? Against the state? And an individual, an individual that does not have the local standard no, to make. Now, the institution that has the legal power to proclaim results, the Constitutional Council, has a deadline of 15 days. What does the law say about this 15 days 
for the proclamation of the results. We all are waiting such an institution to proclaim the results. We are waiting because before it proclaims such a result, it must have uh, received maybe disputes, settled disputes and electoral disputes from candidates and maybe come up with with a... Uh, Who had 72 with, hours to drop the, the petitions, the, the candidates. They had 72 hours from the uh, closure of the polling stations. Yeah, but those who think that they have uh, any revocations to make, I think they must have done so. What I'm saying in essence is, the Constitutional Council, to the best of my knowledge, will respect the law and do, do their job. And proclaim the results within the deadline uh, respected. But I will not go without asking you this question. You know, in other African countries, uh, elsewhere, we have results coming days, just a few days after the election, but we have up to 15 days in Cameroon. Is that uh, not a, a problem? It is a problem. But unfortunately, we Cameroonians are, are always afraid to talk. It's a problem. To tell Cameroonians not to give any trends of, of election, it's, it's not correct. And to have 15 days, so I think that uh, it's all those surrounding facts that Maurice Cantor is taking precautions to, to, to call on everybody to be vigilant. I think he has not called anybody, to the best of my knowledge, he has not called people to, to go on the rampage. And by the way, he's not the only person who's done that. In, uh, in, in one TV station in Yaoundé, they keep saying that probably got 100 percent, the president got 100 percent. Good and fine if it's true, but it should not be a problem that another candidate make such a statement. Barista Limen Fobe, thanks so much for coming. Thank you so much, it was a pleasure. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us in this edition of The News. Goodbye.